Genocide here with part 4B. This is the second video dealing with the exercises. The last video dealt with progressively training your tremolo picking from one pick per beat, two picks per beat, four picks per beat. Training each hand, each finger of your hand to do it independently of the others. Practicing on each and every string so your fretting hands get used to the feel of each string while your picking hand gets used to picking on each string and then of course always maintaining proper hand positions economy of motion double palm muting proper mechanics proper use of tendons so you're not tensing up your muscles in your arm and, and your shoulder and forearm all right now I also want you to think about one thing to add to everything you learned in the last video. Once you're good on the fifth fret, and you know, you jump to the speed picking, you're moving around, well, there's something else you can focus on kind of in between uh, doing the quadruple tremolo picks and before you move on to the single picks but sliding up or down uh, what you can do is you can not just practice on the fifth fret but practice on the first fret practice on the ninth fret on the twelfth fret 17 okay so those represent kind of a, a, a major change in the strings, the thickness. Um, if you practice on all those positions, you know, it'll also get you comfortable with moving up and down the neck, not just this way, but also this way, okay? Now what I would like to show you is how to progress from moving from one string to the next while keeping your picking going. All right, now, we're not gonna, uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this because I just wanna give you the basic idea. I'm not trying to write riffs for you, but this is a little basic, whatever. We'll start with the index finger, right? On the E string. Okay, I want you to start quadruple picking it, and I want you to slide down one fret, and then what I want you to do is kind of roll your index finger so your finger hits the A string fifth, or, or the A string fourth fret, and, and, and that, that roll is when you transition from the E string the A. Okay, so the, the three note riff would be as follows. Now in these examples, when I lift my fingers, it's just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not doing that you know, on accident, I'm purposefully lifting my hand away trying to show you, but, you know. So of course you can move on to palm muting it. You can also palm mute half the lick and not palm mute the other half. Okay, you want to be able, that that's the next step. Once you can speed pick and, and slide around, that means 
you can basically speed pick a power chord. You're, you're picking one note of the power chord properly, right? So you can make songs just with that technique. Once you can slide around and speed pick, you can write melodies. You know, a lot of uh, black metal will use single strings a lot of times for that, for, for that type of a melody. And a lot of times, you know, thrash and death metal will use bigger chord clusters. And, and they also use a lot more percussion-y type of palm muting. Um, but, <clears throat> so, this is that step up from once you can do the picking while sliding, the speed picking with moving, then you, you have developed basic speed picking. The next step is to be able to transition from one string to the next. You know, and you have to get comfortable transitioning from one string all the way across and up and down on each string. Now, we're getting to a point where we'll be at a standstill because you won't be able to progress unless you start developing patterns. So, <clears throat> by patterns, you can actually have real scales or you can not even look at them as scales, but literally just see the pattern. Uh, you know, Zach Wilde's really big into the whole pattern way of playing with his pattern pentatonics all over the fretboard. <clears throat> but here's a riff I, I just came up with for this example. And it's using only two strings, the E string and the A string. Uh, it does take things up an entire notch again because instead of changing strings by barring, I'm going to show you, see, E string 5th fret, A string 3rd fret. This is a great black metal chord, check it out. show you that pattern <clears throat> but you're gonna have to work on the picking yourself E string fifth fret use your ring finger a string third fret that's this real nice dissonant chord you gotta love it it's one of the best black metal chords And you lift your ring finger up, right? And have your middle finger on the fourth fret. And you can practice <clears throat> picking between those two chords with the beat. This is gonna train you to obviously pick two notes at once, a diatonic, okay?
right? And then <clears throat> the little solo line. Okay, see that one four? <clears throat> Fifth fret E string. Third fret A string. Sixth fret A string. Fourth fret D. Third fret E open and then kind of a short little slide which of course you will have developed already with the previous exercises and yeah Now you can vary it. <clears throat> That's why I'm rocking it out a bit. <clears throat> I want you to hear different things you can do. You palm mute it. And not palm the last few notes or you vice versa. You can add in one of those chords like we learned in the last one when you hit the open note in the last video. Let those suckers ring out all dissonant and gnarly. Now let's take it up another notch. <clears throat> We're going to turn this little melodic line into something more dissonant. Just give it a little bit more of a black metal bite because playing it more straightforward is a little bit more of a death metal approach in my mind. Now what I want you to do is as you're picking this, I want you to purposefully not just pick one string, but pick at least two strings at the same time but focus your picking on only one string. So for example, this transition where you go, okay, I want you, I want you to be picking both, but accent one, okay? See, when you put your fourth finger down, you still, on, on the A string, sixth fret you still have the D on your root note right you sound them together see and then right See what I'm saying? That gives it more. More bite. Gives it that black metal raspiness. You know what I'm saying? All right. Now the last part of this series, <clears throat> well, this video, <clears throat> at the very least, is I'm gonna go over some chromatics. And these are important because what these will do is build on everything else, right? Just like that. And it'll train you to use all fingers together. You know, you've trained each one independently. You've gotten used to sliding up and down with each finger. You've gotten used to barring and rolling as you pick. You have all this solid foundation you've, you've built. And now, like a mason, you're going to put the capstone on the motherfucker. And, and how you're going to do that is by getting all four fingers of your fretting hand working together. And that will then enable you to work on four-pick clusters. And the four-pick clusters, really, everything I'm teaching you has tons of things hidden in it that you're actually training, but you may not be totally cognizant of it. This is, this is no different. 
for example, if you start picking up on your last note, it'll be a downstroke and you'll be ready to pick the first note on the next string, right? So that's practicing your economy picking. Now if you start down, then your last pick of that measure is up, so then the next string you have to cross back and go down to keep with your alternate picking. So see whether you, if you start down, 